All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, or Kharkwadash for the new listeners. Yahweh is the true Hebrew name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true Hebrew name of his only begotten son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing this word in truth and in sincerity. To the Israelite foreigners scattered throughout the four corners of the earth who may look like the heathen nations. And to the very few sisters that listen and learn. To you, Shalom. Damn, bro, you spam the same thing three times in a row. You know, you're going to have to get muted for that, dude. Just your best bet is just to listen right now. All right. Um. So, um, I, I believe this was a, a yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, or possibly a day or two ago, where um, uh, Bishop Nathaniel from the I, IUIC, which stands for Israel United in Christ. All right. He um he was a. Uh, I believe he was sick. I'm not sure what he was sick with, but you know, he was um he was battling something. And um a quick little uh, history, you know, um the, the the elders of Great Millstone, the apostles, are right, starting with Apostle Tahar, uh, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Rachar, Apostle Ramlab, you know, and uh, you had uh you know Nate and then uh which is the head of IUIC and you got other um heads of other camp such as uh general Johanna from the isupk which is um i think it's israelite school universal practical knowledge all right you know they were all a part of one west all right point of time and um uh the bishop uh nathaniel from the iuic uh there's videos of him you know back in the day i mean old school vhs tape of him teaching the true name of the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh, breaking it down into Paleo Hebrew, going into the to the history. One of the greatest breakdowns of the name of the Lord. And then um for some reason, um, I don't know, God knows, um, started teaching um most high in Christ, all right, wasn't teaching God's true names. And there was a lot of uh, scoffs and videos done about us for teaching the name Yahweh, etc. And um, so I, I guess the Lord must have jacked him up. Got he was sick. So then when he, uh, I guess the Lord must have healed him. He came back, and there was a video of him teaching in the class where he he declares God's true name. Okay, he he uh, in the video he says. Um, God's he says he said God's true name is Yahweh. All right, which a hey, that's a beautiful thing that now we have uh that that footage of him letting the congregation know that the heavenly father's true name is Yahweh. All right, cuz we always said and believe that we do believe there are members of these other Israelite camps um who are part of the elect, you know? So, um, just want to hop into something quick, uh, and Lord willing, it's edifying. All right. And it's all praises to Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai. All right. For, for this happening, because that congregation is a, is a huge congregation. And, and now they're going to know that the, the true name, since it spoke, since he said it out of his mouth, you know, um, he declared the true name. All do do is lie. Uh, who are you referring to, King? I took Nathaniel's pockets, unfortunately. All right, I don't know if you guys are scoffing or what, but we're gonna we're gonna get into the scriptures. All right, so this is uh Psalms twenty two, and you know what? Let me pull this up in this Bible app.
Well, I mean, he's teaching. He teaches that the um, that we're Israelites, you know, for the most part. Um, but as far as the names go, there were there was a point in time where, you know, they weren't teaching the true names. But again, recently, OK, not too long ago, recently, a day or two ago, he he did in the, in this uh, video in his class teaching, he said that God's true name is Yahweh. So that's a start. OK. Um, so this is uh let me see Psalms 22 I'm gonna start at it says um to to the chief musicians upon al jaleth shahar a psalm of David so this is David's uh, a psalm of David all right 22 it says I would declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, will I praise thee? All right. So this is David saying that he was going to declare God's name unto the brethren, brethren being the children of Israel, which um, that's what the apostles of Great Millstone on down to the elders, you know, on down to us. And there's other uh, Israelite camps that are um, not a part of Great Millstone, but, you know, they teach the same like doctrine teaching the true names of Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, and the true name of his son, Yahweh Shai. All right, we, we've been doing those things. Now, um, hey, you know, it, Lord's will be done, you know, put the spirit on him to, to let his congregation know, look, God's true name is Yahweh. All right, so that's pretty much what he did. He declared his name, God's name, Yahweh's true name, unto the brethren. And that's what we do as well. You know, I always um, strive to start off with my lessons, um, letting everybody know to the new uh, listeners, Yahweh is the only true Hebrew name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the only true Hebrew name of his only begotten son, you know. Um, so, um, you know, it, this is a start. All right. And this is this is letting us know that, hey, we're that much more closer to the end because that congregation is huge, huge. All right. So for <clears throat> for that congregation to, to and I'm sure uh, for the most part, they all seen the video and heard what he said. Hey, that's huge for the nation of Israel because right, he got a huge following and and that and now what they're going to be calling on the true name of the heavenly father lord willing he doesn't push that that uh christ stuff okay because um christ is like a is a greek word you know it's really mashiach which is anointed in the hebrew all right but nonetheless him saying god's true name is yahweh is a start all right Psalms 22 and 22, I would declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. Will I praise thee? All right, let's see what uh, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai said. This is, um. let me see where I want to start. I'm going to read these comments once I'm, uh, once I'm done. I only got a few scriptures, nothing too long. All right, this is St. John 17 and 26. This is, um. Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai speaking. He says, uh, St. John 17 and 26. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. So Yahweh Shai declared the name, okay, unto his followers, Okay. So we know the name. Okay, we have the scriptures. We we have the uh um well we we the Lord created the internet so we could search these things up. You know, we can go back and go back to the Paleo Hebrew and see this is when it says the Lord in all caps, it says what? Yahweh. All right. We could look it up and see. The Savior's name in the Paleo Hebrew, Yahweh Shai. We got we got the um, you know, the information, the sources, the things, you know, because hey, before the internet, 
AR elders, apostles, they had to go to the library and dig for this information, you know, um, concordances and books and all of this. Now we got this knowledge in the fingertips of our hand. Like I could literally pull up the Blue Letter Bible. All right. I got the app, the Blue Letter Bible app. All right. And I can look it up myself. All right. We got what's called today smartphones, technology. All right. As it says in Daniel's, knowledge shall increase. So we got the tools to, to look these things up, you know. So um, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, he even said, I have declared unto them thy name. All right. So God's name has been declared. You got a lot of goofies that are saying, we don't know God's name. We don't know his true name. <laughs> All right. Not only that, we know the history uh, due to research in the Internet of the Hebrew. OK, because today's Hebrew that is spoken, which is modern Hebrew, is what Yiddish. OK, uh, you can go back to the uh, to uh, a man. He was a, a newspaper publisher named Eliezer Ben Yehudi in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Him and a couple of uh, his colleagues revised the Hebrew language and added in uh, uh, certain vowels. They added in the E. They added in the the V. They added in the uh, the U, the O. Let me see. E, O, U. Right. They added in the um, more characters. All right. They they. They revise the Hebrew, which today was modern Hebrew. That's how we know his name is not Yehoshua or uh, what else do they say? Yahweh. We know that those can't be the names because before the the re, the the revise of the Hebrew, that wasn't a part of it. So we 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 could um, um, we understand that. Those aren't the true names. So, you know, that's why you got to do your research and, and study to show thyself approved. Go into these things. All right. Let me see. Uh, right. So David said he was going to declare God's true name or God's name, which is true name is Yahweh. All right. Yahweh, uh, Yahweh Shai himself who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, said that he declared his name as well. All right, let's see. Uh, you know, I'm going to read this Malachi 3 and 16. It reads, Then they that fear Yahweh, the Lord, spake often one to another. You know, and that's really, that's us. The ones who fear God spoke often one to another. How do they do that? We're doing it right now. All right. Through our videos, through us going out and teaching. All right. Us um, congregating with amongst ourselves, going over the scriptures. That's how we speak often one to another. We're doing it right now. We're going over the scriptures. We're going over God's word. All right. It says then they that feared Yahweh the Lord spake often one to another and Yahweh hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahweh the Lord, which the book of remembrance is the scriptures. All right. So it says, and Yahweh the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them. All right. So this word was for us that feared Yahweh the Lord. And that thought upon his name. That's the key point. Thought upon his name. All right. That actually did the research. Wait a minute. His name can't be Jehovah. Why? There was no letter J's back in the ancient time. English is a newly uh, created language. What language were they speaking? Okay, they were speaking Hebrew. But wait a minute. They say Yahweh. That's when you do the research of the modern Hebrew, which is the Yiddish. No, as a matter of fact, it can't be Yahweh. It can't be Yehoshua because the, the, the modern Hebrew that's spoken today was revised by Eliezer ben Yehudi in the late 1800s, early 1900s. See, that's that's thinking upon his name, going back and doing the research. 
you know? A and A, and through the, the power and spirit of the Lord, Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai, he revealed it to us. He gave us his name, all right? Because when you understand scripture, he took away everything from, from the Israelites, his true ch children. He took away our heritage. He took away our nationality, our land, our law, statutes, and commandments. He said that we were going to discontinue from those things because we disobeyed him, all right? Um, all the other captivities of the Israelites, they knew they were Israelites. They knew their language. All right. They knew God's name, etc. All right. It was when this captivity happened. OK, I'll leave it at the transatlantic slave trade. All right. When uh, we got scattered through the four corners of the earth. All right. According to prophecy, that's when he took everything away from us. But now. We're in the end times where he's revealing all these things back unto us and we're waking back up to who we are. All right. And a hey, you should know the truth and the truth has set you free. All right. We're no longer um, those dead bodies, as it says in Revelations 11 uh, and eight, I believe they're dead bodies being in the streets for three days and a half. All right. That great city, which is speaking about here in America. All right. A.K.A. Uh, Babylon, the great, the daughter of Babylon, spiritually Sodom and Egypt. All right. We were here uh, not physically dead, but spiritually dead for for a time period. And now we're waking back up where the uh, like it says in Ezekiel 37, the breath entered into those dry bones where the skin came back on and the sinews and the spirit entered into them all right and now we woken back up as it says in um i think it's proverbs or uh ecclesiastes it says uh um a man who wandereth out of the way of understanding remaineth in the congregation of the dead so when you don't understand the scriptures when you don't know god's name his true name all right you're spiritually dead all right you're in the congregation of the dead all right. But now we've woken back up to who we are. And what do we do when we always start out with our lessons? We declare God's true name. It's Yahweh. God is just a title. All right. God is just, it's like saying Mr. Teacher, President. It's just a title. All right. What God are you talking about? What is his name? You know, ooh, ooh. as a matter of fact, I got to get that. That's in Proverbs. This is a. Uh, what is that? Proverbs 30. I think 30 and four. Let me see. Let me see. Yep. This is Proverbs 30 and four. Hold on. Let me hit this water. Let me see what's going on in the comment. English has its roots well before Hebrew was spoken. I doubt that very much. The truth is Jesus is my savior. Well, you got to understand beyond Zion, as it, it states in the book of uh, Acts, the fourth chapter, there's only one name given under heaven. Jesus is not the, that name. You can even go into the Zondervan's Bible Compact Dictionary. The scholars will even tell you his name is Joshua. Uh, well, I'll say the, the correct way of saying it in English would be Joshua. All right. Because when you read in the New Testament, when it's speaking about Joshua, the son of Nun, the one who came after Moses, it lets you know they both have the same name, Joshua. All right. So our Lord and Savior has the same name as Joshua, which means he saves, he delivers. All right. Hold on, let me plug this up, which means he saves, he delivers. So calling on Jesus is, is a false name. And I mean... There's only one name given. So if you want to uh, shoot your shoot your luck with that, then so be it. But this is Proverbs 30 and 4. It reads, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Question mark. 
Okay, it's a question. Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Question mark. Who hath bound the waters in the garment? Question mark. These are all questions. Who hath established all the ends of the earth? Question mark. What is his name? Whose name? The one that did all of these things. What is his name and what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Question mark. All right. So again, J is a, well, for one, English originated, didn't even have the J. All right. The J came later, which was an extension of the I. All right. I got a King James 1611 Bible, which is old English. Thou, they, um, there's a, when it says unto, it doesn't say, it doesn't read U-N-T-O. It reads V-N-T-O for certain the, it's just the Y for, um, for certain, like, uh, it's it's not spelled the way how we spell it today in modern English. You know, um, there was there uh, in the King James sixteen eleven there is there was no J. So when you read where it says Jesus, it says Iesus. All right, so that goes to show you that <laughs> it's not his name. All right. David Va, stop getting caught up. The son of God is still the son of God, no matter what you call him. Well, actually, it does matter what you call him. The scriptures say there's only one name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. There's only one name. So your name comes with what? Your reputation. And I, I, I started using this example. If you're a man and you have a woman and you're you're with your woman and she calls you, so your name is James. And you're with the and you're with your woman, but she she calls you David. Oh, don't I know you meant me, baby. Don't worry. Even though that's not my name. You think no, absolutely not. You're gonna feel some type of way. That's why the scriptures say what it says. There's only one name. All right, you can't get around the scriptures. If you if you want to go around the scriptures, then you're leaning upon your own understanding, which is a very dangerous thing to do. This is a. Uh, the last scripture I got on deck is Zephaniah 3 and 9. It says, for this is going into end time prophecy. It reads, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. What's that pure language? The, the language of the heavens. All right. Uh, and how do we know Hebrew is the, the language of the heavens? Uh, you can go to Acts, the 26th chapter. Where our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who wrote ignorantly calls Jesus. I'm going to always say that because you don't know who's listening, who, whoever may be new. He was already ascended up into the heavens and he came to Paul. All right. The voice that Paul heard in the uh, when he was, I believe he was traveling to Damascus. His name was Saul at the time. He revealed himself and said, A. Hey, he said, he said, who are you? Who are you, Lord? And the voice said it, that the voice that Paul heard was in the Hebrew tongue. So that's how we know that the, the pure language was his, the, the language of the heavens is Hebrew. All right. Because he told Paul his name in the in the Hebrew tongue, the Hebrew language. All right. So he didn't say my name. If, if you were there. All right. If you were Paul, let's just let's just put yourself in his shoes and you and and it was in the Hebrew tongue. Who who are you, Lord? He didn't say I am Jesus for one that link that the J didn't even exist. The jaw, you know, the uh, sound didn't exist. He didn't say that. He said, I am Yahweh Shai. He told him who he was in the Hebrew tongue. All right. So Zephaniah three and nine for then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call, <clears throat> excuse me, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord. All, then this is when you look it up right here. It's Yahweh. When you look it up in the uh, Hebrew, you're going to see this. All right. Depending on what you look up, you could look up the uh, Assyrian Hebrew or the Paleo, which they, uh, the characters are different, but the way you pronounce it is the same. Yahweh. All right. It says Yahweh. 
that so he's going to return the pure language that they may all call upon the name of Yahweh the Lord to serve him with one consent. All right. Not somebody say Yahweh and then this person say uh, uh, Yahweh and this person says Yehoshua and this person saying Jehovah and that person saying God. That's not one consent. That's confusion. He's returned the pure language. He gave us back the Hebrew. OK, the scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun. So this isn't this isn't like we just made up a whole new language. He returned it back unto us so we can call all of us on his name, Yahweh, and his son's name, Yahweh Shai as well. And it's a beautiful thing that the Bishop Nathaniel from IUIC, Israelites United in Christ, he declared to the congregation, I, I'm not too sure, I just seen the video today, it might have been yesterday, it might have been the day before, but nonetheless, it was recently, and, and again, that congregation is is they have numbers They're They do those thousand man marches. You know, there's a lot of people and a lot of people seen that. All right. And so now they know that God's true name is Yahweh because he declared it amongst his congregation. Our apostles of Great Millstone, Ben and the elders on down, been declaring that name. Jehovah. Well, I mean, again, that's a that's an English word. It's not. Uh, oh, let me pull this up. Hey, thank you for saying that because you made me think of a scripture. Um, Let's go to. Are right, you going to have to bear with me on this one? Um, Did I finish that? All right. Yep. OK, so I finished that scripture. So this is the importance of the original language, because when things translate over, for one, you look, there's a thing called loss in translation. All right. Let me see. Somebody said, uh, Rondel, Rondel King says, I understand Yahweh, but where have you seen Yahweh shy in the scriptures? Man, I wasn't trying to make this that long, but, um. I got you, bro. If it, if you're still in this when I'm done, I got you on that question. So this is the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, which you can find this in the Apocrypha, which is in the King James 1611 Bible, the same edition Bible the president's swearing on. All right. This is uh, in a part of the original King James 1611. So it's it's canon because it backs up the scriptures. So let me see. This is in the prologue. So this is a Ecclesiasticus Sirach 1 and 1. It's it's a long prologue, but I'm gonna just hit the point that's uh that's relevant to the topic. Let me see. Okay, it's about right here. Uh Damn, man. See, all, this is all good right here. Man, let me see. Okay, let me, I'm going to start right here. It says, um, yeah, oh, dang. I'm going to start at the top. No, I'm just playing. All right. It says, um, okay. It says, wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention. So you have to, he's saying, read this with favor and attention. Okay. Because again, when you, when you translate something, there's a thing called lost in translation, like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves the world. You see, right. The world, the, the word world, you're going to think is speaking about everybody, but when you look up the word world in its original, uh, um, the, uh, the Greek, all right, it's, there's, there's multiple definitions for that word. All right. You can go to, he, I think it's Hebrews one and two. It says worlds with the S at the end, you know, so you got, um, the entire world, you got, um, um, the, uh, the government, the agreement, the nation of Israel, cosmos, you got that. And then you got, a word world, which when you look it up in the Greek, it goes back to 
a eon, which means a time period, you know, an, an age. So you got to you got to read these things with favor and attention. All right. To get the true understanding. Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us. Forgive us wherein we may seem to come short of some words. Hey, forgive us because it's going to seem like, you know, we come we fall short on some words in the translation. Which we have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue, another language, have not the same force in them. You lose its power. You, you lose its meaning. All right. That's why you got to go back to the original language. All right. That's why there's a, a, a concordance. So you can go back to the original meanings. All right. Hell, uh, you got clerical errors. You know, God is perfect, right? But man, we're in the flesh. We'll make a little mistake here and there. You know what I'm saying? So there are certain words that when you go back, it'll say one thing. Oh, yeah, okay. But when you go back to the uh, original language, like uh, 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 like the Hebrew, it'll let you know in that definition. It's really supposed to say this. It was a clerical error from the translate from translating it from this language to that language it, you that's why it's important to go back to it because you will be like wait a minute it really don't say that it says this all right so it says um which we have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them and it's gonna it's gonna expound on it and not only these things but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. Whew. <laughs> That's beautiful. So what is that letting you know? It's letting you know, stop being lazy and go back, learn the Hebrew. It's, you know, you know, you learned your A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's the same thing learning the Hebrew. You learn the characters first. And then you start learning words here, shalom, which is like peace. Uh, then you you learn certain words like barakata, which means bless you. You start slowly picking up these words. It's, it's easy. You just got to labor and do the work. All right. Um. Yeah, so A, um, a it's a beautiful thing that this is happening. The name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is being declared. All right. Um, with that, Lord willing, this was edifying. Till next time, Shalom.